That was a doozy of a presser. Uh, Ron Rivera getting us started on a Wednesday with his usual Wednesday press conference. It's unusual because it's the day after the trade deadline. And it's silly because, like, I'll just get this off my chest first. What is the NFL doing that the Chase Young trade is not finalized yet, that Ron can't talk about it? Like, it's just not that complicated. You had a deadline. Um, I guess I guess they can't do it because San Francisco's on their bye week and, like, then, you know, the way the, the medical stuff works with the, the physicals and whatever, like, it's not officially complete till the physical. But, like, get your team doctor in there and take a freaking physical. Like, what are we doing? And, by the way, how weird and awkward would it be if he failed the physical and had to come back? Like, I always, like, it's not unprecedented. It is rare, but, like, I guess technically that's on the table. Could you imagine after all the commentary the last couple of days? all the stuff that's leaked out, all the everything, that if the Niners look at his knee and go, eh, never mind, and he came back? Can't really imagine it, but I guess I can imagine it. Oh, that would be awkward, Turtle. <laughs> I'd probably just be like, Chase, you're going to stay away till the end of the year. You have played your last game here, sir. Um, but I, I think there's two things that stick out from that press conference. One's just kind of an interesting note. Um, which is Ron admitted at the end there, something that I think we all speculated to be true. And I think is ultimately a good thing. Although the HR department in Ashburn might now have a little bit of a conundrum on their hands. Uh, the, not in the ways that the old, the old HR people had conundrums, although there weren't HR people and that was part of the problem. The point is, uh, Eugene Shen is not supposed to start until November 6th. He's the new senior VP of football strategy. Uh, the new analytics guy that, that you've heard about, um, He's not supposed to technically start. His official start date is 11-6. And if he's not an employee yet, he shouldn't be involved in discussions, theoretically. But, like, he was. So, um, I think that's good. Like, if I'm Eugene Chen, I want to be involved. I'm like, these are pretty important decisions. And I'm just like, I'm good. We'll figure it out. So, I don't know whether HR actually is going to have to do something, move up his start date, pay him a contractor fee, whatever. But I think it's great that he's involved in these conversations. And it would not surprise me, by the way, if that's the case, that perhaps like he or others is, you know, I, I would assume Josh Harris has a, a group of consultants that he's working with um, to kind of double check what the current staff is doing. And it wouldn't be surprised if uh, Eugene Shen was one of the people that he had. Like, however he's involved, good. He's smart. Um, he's very informed about the league. He's up to date on the different models and the types of things that, you know, you want to get from an analytics department. I think it's great that he's involved. But the bigger thing, Anthony, that you and I were like, dude, what are you doing as we listen to that press conference? He is using Sam Howell, he being Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera is using Sam Howell as a human shield. And I, for one, hate it. Every single answer is like, well, we got the quarterback. We got the quarterback. We got the quarterback. Quit pitching for your job at the podium and do better at doing the job in the game. God, that was the most sports talk radio y, just obtuse, stupid thing I've ever said into a microphone. But seriously, man, I get why people get into this career and say just the most obvious, inane stuff. Like, what are you doing? You're asked about the defensive line, and somehow you wind up talking about how, well, it's the, this organization's been looking for a quarterback for a long time. This is not what Ron Rivera sounds like. But whatever. I don't have a good Rivera impression. Sue me. Actually, don't. We, this organization's been looking for a quarterback for a long time, and well, I, I really do. I really think that we got one. The truth of the matter is, more than anything else, Sam Howell, Sam Howell, Howell, Sam. Sam Howell, Sam Howell, the quarterback. Blah, 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 barf. Like, just answer the questions. Just talk about how your defense is 28th in DVOA, despite the fact that you have more investment on that side of the ball than the other side of the ball, which is more or less played kind of what we thought it would be this year. And, by the way, you're a defensive head coach. Like, just talk about how you haven't been able to figure out how to be consistent on that side of the ball in four freaking years, despite the fact that you had three borderline pro ball uh, defensive linemen when you got here. You drafted a guy who was supposed to be a generational talent. Now you just had to trade him away because you botched that one so bad. 
uh, for a com- compensatory third round pick. You also took a linebacker, which is supposed to be your uh, p- position of specialty in the first round a couple years ago, and you can't even play that guy 100% of snaps until this year when the guy you brought in to replace him, even though you didn't really need replacing, finally after three years wasn't that good and then got hurt when he finally started around in a form because you don't seem to understand that the season starts in September and not in the middle of October. That your first round DB that you you drafted to be the playmaker has had nothing but plays made on him and you benched him. That your second round pick uh, from, from this year who was supposed to do something can't be put in a position to do anything well. And you keep moving him around. That's probably not helping things. Just talk about that stuff. Quit talking about the excitement you have for a future you're not going to be a part of. And I, like, I, mm. I know he can't talk about, well, I, you know, if he came out and was like, well, I'm going to be fired. I don't give a rats, you know what? Like, that's not a good look either. But could you focus on now? Could you focus on something? You know, he talked on Sunday about all I can do is look one game at a time. And he had this, like, very Belichickian, we're on to Cincinnati thing happening. And then all of a sudden, he comes out today, and he's talking about the quarterback of the future. Talking about potential. Talk about the game in front of you. We all know there's a bigger picture happening here. But guess what? Realistically, you're going to have to do a lot of what's in front of you right to be even considered to be a part of that future. And realistically, the right in front of you hasn't been your specialty for at least four years here. And because I know what happened in Carolina, wasn't your specialty there either. I don't know why that got so under my skin. Maybe I'm just, Anthony, fed up with like this, this stupid purgatory this team is in. But like, oh, that bot. I also hate it when press conferences, when people don't answer the question. You're not a politician. You don't have to pivot your talking points. You're a football coach. Just answer the freaking question. And if you can't answer it without giving competitive advantage, then say that. Just be like, hey, you want to know what? I don't really think that it's in my best interest to answer that question in a detailed manner uh, because it would probably give the Patriots and, and our other opponents some uh, some advantage. Just say that. I don't get it. That's my rant. I'm done ranting for now, probably until the next segment when he'll say something else dumb. I mean, I, I, I don't get it either. And... I actually laughed when he, you know, decided to bring the quarterback situation up when they were talking about the defensive line and their struggle to, you know, be consistent. Because I just – this is what he, – he, he's been doing this all season long, and it's sort of like he's trying to, like, cop a plea um, because he knows his job is on the line, but nobody – He's just so t- unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, like, the other thing, too, <laughs> let's be very frank about this. Like, the the question – that David Aldridge asks about, like, hey, this stuff comes out about Chase and his effort. Mm-hmm. And Ron's like, oh, I hate that it came out. I, who, if you can't put your name on it. It's his, like his old friend from college who wrote the freaking story. How dumb do you think we are, man? Everybody knows that Mike Silver and Ron Rivera are friends. You're okay. That's okay. I don't begrudge you. Like, there are people that I've known for a long... Like, when I interview Alicia Clark, that's not journalism. Like, I I take a journalistic principle to the questions because I'm genuinely interested both in in her answers um, because I think it's what makes good questions, and I'm trying to do right by the audience. I don't have her on for funsies. I have her on because, like, everyone was talking about the Aces winning the championship, so we had her on, or when she was with the Mystics, like, she was here. But I've known Alicia since we were in college. We're friends, like... If, if there was a story that came out, if, if all of a sudden I started, uh, if I published a story uh, in the Washington Post or in uh, some outlet that was like sources close to the Las Vegas Aces, everyone would know who the hell it, it was. Like, of course it would be Alicia. Who else do I know with the Aces? And not that, like, I don't cover the, the W like Mike Silver's covered the NFL. I'm not saying he doesn't know other people in the Commanders. But, like, Mike Silver had a job with the Commanders like five days after Ron Rivera was hired. And he did like one season's worth of stuff and then went back to whatever he's doing now and he pops up whenever Ron Rivera needs something. So like, we all understand that's part of the deal. I don't begrudge Mike. I don't even begrudge Ron. But then don't get on your stupid high horse in a press conference and be like, I don't know how that got out. 
That's embarrassing. Don't insult my intelligence. That's that's the main thing. That really irks me. I also might just be irritable today, Anthony. I'm tired. I told you I was tired this morning. I'm still tired. Did you finish soundproofing your new office space? No, I just the soundproofing's all laying on the floor because okay. it needs to like poof up a little bit. Yeah. But I am excited to get that on the wall. That's my project for tomorrow or at the very latest Friday because uh, I would like to do my show from that room on Friday. Anyway, uh, there's also a quote, speaking of quotes, that uh, some on the commander's staff think that this could be an addition by subtraction situation for the Washington commanders. Hmm, where did anybody hear that? Oh, that's right. I said that yesterday on my show, but Ben Standig got it from sources inside the organization. He talked about it with the sports junkies this morning. We'll talk about it, and you'll hear what Ben had to say next on the Hoffman Show. We're on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.